Welcome to this short tutorial where we will go through some of the steps you will need to take in order to complete your Change the Date assignment. This assignment asks you to perform a number of tasks. Firstly, in Part A, you are asked to explain the significance and history of Australia Day. Then, in Part B, you are given three arguments and you are asked to research one or more of them. Very rarely is an argument black and white. When you've gone through several different perspectives from different articles and you've examined all the key facts that surround the argument, you should be able to arrive at your own informed point of view. The reason it's called an informed point of view is that it is a view based on information, not simply a hunch or a feeling. Many people have opinions about things that they know nothing much about, and these are what we call uninformed opinions. To make sure your teacher knows that your opinion or point of view is informed, you need to make sure that you mention the information you used to create your point of view. As you develop the ability to analyse other people's points of view, you will start to notice how some people expect you to believe something is true simply because they say it is so. This happens in advertising quite a lot, and you will become more sceptical of certain points of view, and you will want to check out what other people think first, before you decide what you think. And this is what you are asked to do in this assignment. You are being asked to share your point of view, but also to back it up with information and examples of things that other people have thought and said about the issue. That way, your teacher knows that your opinion is truly an informed one and you really understand what you are talking about. Knowledge Checkpoint What do we need to do to present our view as an informed point of view? Let's have a go at finding some information that you can use to develop an informed point of view. Where would we look for this information? Many students would go straight to Google, and that's not a bad thing. But as we all know, Google is not a 100% reliable way of obtaining consistently accurate results. For instance, a simple search in Google will bring back millions of results. And while some of these may be links to trustworthy sources, some will not. Sometimes it's easy to tell when a website is misleading or full of incorrect information, but sometimes it's very hard to tell. And plenty of websites look very official, but are full of incorrect information and bias. The only way to really guarantee that what we are looking at is the real deal is by ensuring that the source is authoritative. What does this mean? Well, it means trustworthy. An authoritative source is one that carries some authority. Either the author is an expert in the field, or the people who place the information there have checked that the facts are correct. Sometimes it's okay to use what we call popular sources, like magazines or newspapers. These sources vary in terms of authoritativeness, but they can still be used to make a point. For example, an article in the Herald Sun newspaper might criticise a particular point of view, such as changing the date of Australia Day, and the author of the article might be very strong in their opinion. Even though this kind of article is an opinion piece, you can still use it in your assignment. Why would you mention someone else's opinion? Well, you could do it to prove to your teacher that other people share your point of view, and therefore the view is significant. Or maybe you might use it to prove to your teacher just how wrong some other people's points of view are and why. Our school library has a number of authoritative sources available for you to use, including books, DVDs, and online resources. Let's take a look at two of these online resources right now. So here we are in Schoolbox, and we need to scroll down the homepage and click on the library link. 
This will take you to the library area of Schoolbox. Notice there is a menu at the top. We need to click on the link that says Find Articles, News and Videos. This will take you to a page full of digital resources, including a large selection of information databases. If you look carefully, you'll notice that each of these information databases caters to a particular subject area. We have information, data, information databases for science. We have some for geography and culture. We have some for history and so on. The one that we'll be using today is called Australian and New Zealand Points of View. And it's this database here with all the colorful question marks on it. This database contains authoritative and popular articles on a huge range of social issues relevant to Australia and New Zealand. All the articles in this database were published in Australia or New Zealand, so they are very useful for students who need to research issues that relate specifically to Australia, like the issue of Australia Day. But before we go into this database and do a search, let's first visit our two online encyclopedias in order to get a basic understanding and definition of our topic. It's very important that you don't use Wikipedia instead, because although Wikipedia is a wonderful resource, it is not authoritative. The problem with Wikipedia is that it consists of contributions from the general public. That means that we can never really know for sure who the authors are, or whether they are correct in what they say. There have been plenty of examples over the years where Wikipedia has contained false information, including hoaxes. This is why your teachers will not accept Wikipedia as a source in your assignment. So you must instead use an authoritative source, and this will enable us to answer the first question in the assignment, which is, explain the significance and history of Australia Day. Knowledge Checkpoint Wikipedia is not allowed in this assignment. Why is this? The two online encyclopedias are World Book and Britannica Schools, which is the digital version of Encyclopedia Britannica. First, I'm going to go into World Book. And I'm going to type my search in here. Now, because this is two words, I need to tell the database to treat this as one thing because we don't want it looking for information on day or just information on Australia. We want it to consider these two terms as Australia Day, which is the one thing. So the way that we do that is we pop it into speech marks and hit search. And here's our results list. The very first result is relevant. And if I click on it, I can see that there's a general overview of the topic. Now let's go and have a look at the other database, which is Britannica School. Okay, once you're in there, you can select which level you'd like to enter through. And I'm going to click high because we're in high school. And up the top, there's a search field. And it looks like the first result is relevant. So we have two different explanations here, or two different descriptions, and you just need to maybe read through both of them and pick the useful bits out. But what we really want to do as we're looking through it is take note of the keywords that are used in the overview. Do some stand out as being important? If they do, Jot these down so that you can use them in your search later on when you start looking for articles about other people's opinions. So let's say, for example, that we'll be researching two of the three arguments listed in your assignment outline. Changing the date of Australia Day, or keeping it the same, and 
changing the focus of Australia Day to include Indigenous Australians. When we read through the information in World Book, we can see that certain keywords relate to these arguments and they stand out, such as down the bottom here. We can see that instead of calling Australia Day Australia Day, many of Australia's native people refer to Australia Day as Invasion Day or Survival Day. Well, once we have an understanding of our topic and a list of keywords, we can use those words in our search and we're ready to start searching a database. Let's do that. But before we do, let's take a quick look at some special tricks we can use to make our searches really powerful. What we want to get is relevant results as quickly as possible. We do not want to sift through thousands of results and spend hours trying to find articles that are actually useful to us. We want to get exactly what we need asked. So to do this, I need to show you how to use something called Boolean operators. These are special words or commands that you can use to tell a database exactly what to bring back for you. There are three Boolean operators, and, or, and not. These operators must always be written in capital letters. If you don't use capital letters, the database will not treat them as a Boolean operator. And in fact, it will simply ignore them. Databases ignore words like and, or, and not because they are non-topic words and really, Every single article in a database probably contains these words. Other words like this are a, the, it, and is. The only time a database will listen to these kinds of words is when they are contained within speech marks along with other words, such as fish and chips. So let's take a look at how these Boolean operators work. And we'll do this by starting our research. So let's go into the database here. And what we see is a search field where we can type our keywords and our Boolean operators. Let's first try Australia Day. And of course, we've remembered to put this in speech marks so that the database knows to treat it as one. We've got a Boolean operator here and and then another keyword, date. Now this means that the database will bring us back articles that contain both of these terms. It has to contain Australia Day and date because we're forcing it to by adding this Boolean operator. Without this Boolean operator, we may get articles with the word date or articles with the word Australia Day, but not necessarily both of them. So it's really important that we keep that Boolean operator in there. Okay, let's click search and see what happens. So we've got 678 results and we can limit these results by using some of the tools on the left hand side, such as date, or resource type, or we can look at specific subject areas, or even which publication. Now looking through these results, if I scroll down a little bit, I might see something that looks irrelevant. Now here's a result here about Triple J holding its hottest 100 on Australia Day. And I don't really think this is relevant to our research. So I'm gonna grab that word triple J, copy it, and then I'm gonna use the Boolean operator not to omit triple J. And what should happen is that the database will then strip out any results that have triple J. So now we've repeated our search and I can't see triple J. And as you can see, 
up here we've gone down and we can keep doing this as as much as we like so here's one that says dick smith maybe we want to get rid of that so let's use the boolean operator not again and dick smith So we've gone from 670 to 667. So there must have been three results in there with Dick Smith's name in it, and he's not there anymore. Now the other really important Boolean operator is OR. And let's have a look at how that one works. I've got here Australia Day and date. And I've noticed in my searching that sometimes people use the word Aboriginal instead of Indigenous. So I really don't want to miss out on any of those results because those words, sometimes they, they're synonymous. They're used to mean the same thing. So I'm going to use Indigenous and or and then Aboriginal in this way so that the database is told that either of these terms will suffice. So they're kind of treated as the same. Let's see what we get with this search. 169 results. Now what if we just used Aboriginal? Let's get rid of Indigenous and get rid of OR and see what would have happened. 84. So that's a lot of results for us to have missed out on. So make sure that when you're searching, you use these Boolean operators to really control the kinds of results that you get back. Now, the other really great thing about this particular database is that because it's focused on contentious issues, you can also search by category or by, by issue. So this is on the home page, back on the home page. And if you scroll down underneath this heading, browse by category, you'll find different topics and different issues listed. And it just so happens that there is one here for Australia Day. So if I click on that, this gives you an idea of what you'll see for each of these issues. And what you're given is a general overview of the issue and why it's contentious and a little bit about its history. And then up here, you have some very useful things. You actually have an argument for and an argument against. And you can click on these individually and read them. And they will give you an idea of how you might structure each side of the argument. That's the argument for, and that's the argument against. Now, obviously you can't copy and paste these directly into your assignment um, or, or paraphrase them. Um, what you can do, however, is use them as a guide to assist you in creating your own argument and formulating your own point of view and presenting it. Um, and for some extra help down the bottom here, there's a very useful guide to critical analysis uh, and it, it covers the main points that you need to know about when you are presenting a critical argument and um, it's just a rough guide. So all of these things should help you a great deal in your assignment. Um, but if you have any problems, please ask a teacher for help and or come and ask the library staff because we're more than happy to help you. Thank you.